Mokanyo Matreba, who is running a series on growing in Christ. Last week, she spoke to us about the mystery of growth, where we are the seed and grace is our soil. This is your time, my queen. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Oshili. Let me greet the blood of saints in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. I just want to establish, am I audible? Um, am I clear to everyone? Yes, you are audible and very clear, my queen. God is good, thank you so much. Um, let me take this opportunity again and greet you, beloved. You know, uh, waking up these days, we cannot take it for granted. We always thank God for the gift of life uh, because we know that we live in times where we're not even guaranteed about the next minute. So every time we find to breathe, we need to give glory to God. Um, as I've been introduced, I'm Nokanyo Mateba, and I'll be talking about growing in, in Christ. You know, ever since I've been given this topic to talk on, you know, the Lord has been affording me lot of platforms and opportunities for me to grow and believe you me one of that I would love to share before I go to my to my to my verse this morning and um, this week God impressed to me pain as the necessity or an indication for 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 life you know that you are alive um pain being a needed uh, tool to ensure our ex existence and our livelihood. And, and, and growth is not easy and it is much needed. And growth is the only sign that a thing is alive. You know, when you give birth, oh, mama would know this, when you give birth to your baby and your baby does not cry, the doctors then, they introduce pain. You'll find them beating, beating the baby, you know, uh, because pain, pain uh, uh, is introduced at birth to us as a sign that we are alive. And as we continue to live, pain is much needed to induce growth in us. And as growth takes place, that alone is a sign that we are alive. The day we cease to grow, it means that we have stopped living. We have ceased to live. We, we're now dead. So spiritually, if you're not growing, you are dying. If you're not growing, you are dying. So we, we need pain. We need pain as an indication that we are alive, as an indication that there is breath within us. So maybe during the week you've encountered many challenges and you've cried a lot and you were disappointed. I'm just here to say, no man, it's just a sign that you are alive. Be grateful that you are alive. Uh, you're still alive and kicking. You are still spiritually alive. It's still an indication that the enemy wants nothing to do with you. You're still an enemy with the devil. So because of that, let's learn to embrace pain and, and know that we, we use pain to induce growth and we will continue to grow. And I remember one time I shared a tool, an agricultural tool that is called a pruner. A pruner is a tool that is used to cut like a scissor, but it's cutting parts is not long as that of a scissor, but a pruner's cutting part is curved and also it is short because the sole purpose of the pruner is not to utterly cut off or to cut off completely, but it is to bring shape. It is to cut off areas that are dead and areas that are overgrown. So when you prune your plant, you are not destroying it. You're not causing it to die. You're not annihilating it. But when you're pruning it, you are giving it shape and inducing more growth. But believe you me, when you prune it, it's also a painful process because there's cutting involved. And I always say that 
you know, we need that at some point. We need other people to be cut off. We need other areas in our lives to be cut off. We need to be shaped by God. Those areas that are overgrown, we need him to cut. You know, some of us have this pride, you know, self has overgrown. We see ourselves, if it's, it's not done by us, no one does it best than us. And we need God to prune us. We need him to cut those overgrown edges in our lives. So we remain humble and remain dependent on him. I was just touching base on that one. Now and then, you know, this topic is so relevant to me because it has that agricultural fee growing in Christ. Now we go back and visit our text again with the few minutes that I have. We visit our text in 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, we read verse 18. It says, but grow, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Now, I would love to, 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 to talk about Genesis chapter 6, whilst we base our, our lesson or our teaching in, in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Now listen to this one. Genesis chapter 6, God visits jo Noah and he says to Noah, mm -hmm. Noah, the in iniquity of humankind is before me. And I am sorry that I've created humankind. And the Lord, the Bible says, was <laughs> grieved, was grieved that he has created. Uh, maybe if we could mute our mics so that when we, we, we can be able to, to progress uh, swiftly. Now, listen to this one. Now, then God said to Noah, make yourself an ark, build yourself an ark. Ne? This ark, you should make it to have three decks. Now I'm going to talk about those three decks this morning. Make that ark to have three decks. And these decks, um, I don't know how to focus on the size of the ark. Believe you me, it's not the size, but the design that I'm impressed yeah. about. Because listen, the design, God was specific that you should make it to have three decks. And these three decks, it should be upward moving. Now the ark was upward moving. And God said, um, make this one bigger, you know, um, the, the, the NC one bigger. And God gave a specification also that you should make a window, but the window should be on the last deck on top, there on top. Ne? Okay, let's, let's quickly zoom in because I don't have the luxury of time. To, to unpack everything. Now, God then says, Noah, enter into the ark. And Noah then uh, takes animals, you know, he opens the ark, the animals enter the ark two by two, uh, they enter the ark. And also Noah and his family, they enter the ark. Now, when they were entering, they were entering in the first deck, which was down there, the lower deck, they were entering in that deck. And as they were entering there, then the door was closed. But believe you me, God's design for Noah and his family was not for them to remain on the lower deck. Why am I saying that? Noah was still in danger. He could have died though he was saved from the flood but he could have died inside the ark had he remained on the lower deck. I'm coming somewhere. The lower deck, that's where he entered with the animals and everything. Now the lower deck was not his de designated place to be. Now he were to enter the lower deck when they all enter with animals and stuff like that, he were to progress to the upper deck he had to go and go up to the upper deck. That's where he was going to abide with his family. Now, believe me, you, that these three decks represent three stages of salvation. Now, the lower deck represents justification. The second one represents sanctification. And the last one represents glorification. Now, when Noah and his family entered the lower deck, they were justified by Christ. 
they entered, they were saved. They were saved from the flood and they entered the ark. Believe you me, they were still in danger had they decided to remain in the lower deck. Had they remained to remain, they decided to remain in the justification process. Why am I saying this? Because they at a lower deck, he was living with the animals. He was living with, with creatures. Now, based on ecosystem, we all know that it is not ideal for Noah to live with all those animals. It could have been detrimental to his life, to his well-being. He could not live long in that deck because that was just an entry level in his salvation. Had he decided to remain in that deck, I believe, I strongly believe that though saved from the rain, but he could have been suffocated and utterly destroyed inside the ark. Now let me bring it home closer. When we accepted Christ as our personal savior, we entered a lower deck of the ark. We were justified by Christ through his blood. We were made whole. You know, just to give a, a, a brief picture on this, the lower deck, when we accepted Christ, uh, Pastor Lupondran once made a very good illustration of this and said, when we accept Christ, we are justified. Christ's righteousness is given to us so that when God looks at us, he sees us robed in his righteousness and our lives are spared. But the reality of the matter underneath lies the sinful creature, the sinful being. He even said when he was making this illustration, that it is like a, someone who's clueless about driving and you want a driver's license. This is what happens, justification. It is when you are given a driver's license before you even do K53. It is when you are given a driver's license that is in, which is an indication that you are a well-known, a renowned driver in South Africa. But the reality of the matter is that you know, you do not know how to drive. But justification, we are given license before we even do K53. We are given Christ's righteousness. We are given Christ's spotless and blameless character. And we accept it through faith. And with, as we receive his righteousness, the reality of the matter is that we do not know how to drive. We are still sinful. We still uh, 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 harbor habits or, or, or things that are sinful and not in according of God's word. Now then, after justification process, then God says that now that you are justified th through Christ, now be ye holy. We go to the next deck, the deck of sanctification a process where now a sinful being is made holy. Believe me when I say to you, it is possible to die in God's church whilst you're still at the lower deck. Many of us have entered in true church and accepted God as our personal savior years ago. But I am here to tell you that if you do not grow and outgrow certain habits, if you do not go to a point where you are now consecrated, you are made holy, you are now in a space where God now is teaching you how to be now and how to live like his child. The Bible says, beloved, now we are the children of God. The first or the crux of the matter is that we are now given a title that we are God's children, though we are still sinful in nature. But through the process of sanctification, now we are taught how to be the children of God, how to live as children of God, how to conduct ourselves as children of God. Now we go to the sanctification phase. We go to the sanctification stage where a sinner is made holy. It is a stage, Mazaran, where you enter the church. We know you still have your own habits. You still do your things backward at, at, at behind the scenes. We know you still harbor and entertain certain sinful habits, but we need to grow. 
We need to get to a place where the grace of God now trains us, enable us to deny on all sinful ways, to say no to the devil. Now grace, the other faces of grace, it gives us power. It enables us to say no thank you to sin. Now it is when we reach that stage of sanctification where now the Lord el eliminates the appetite of sin from our bodies. You know, where we are able to say the pipe I used to smoke, I smoke it no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. You know, Barcelona, the process of sanctification is a process where God is teaching us, now that you are my children, this is how you should conduct yourself as a royal child, as a child of the throne. This is how you should conduct yourself. I am told that they at the royal house, the royal family, I am told whenever, whether the sons, they get married, the first few days, few weeks, few months, they invest on training whoever is now joining the royal family on the do's and don'ts of royalty. As a royal child, you cannot sit anyhow. As a royal child, you cannot laugh anyhow. As a royal child, you cannot eat everything because there are rules and regulations. Now that you belong in this house of royalty, there are things that you need to get rid of. There are different hairstyles that you need not to do. They are told not to leave their hair hanging. They need to dignify in a dignified manner to, 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 to fix their hair, fix their posture, guard how they speak because now they are of royalty. Now in the stage of sanctification, God is taking this ungovernable, lawless, rebellious, corruptible creature. And God in this sanctification stage is teaching us now that you are of royalty, no can you don't eat everything. Now you now that you are of royalty, no can you don't speak and entertain everything. Now you, that you are of royalty, choose your company. Now that you are of royalty, God, how you conduct yourself. Because now you are an ambassador of royalty. But alone this morning, God has sent me to say, grow, cooler, move from justification, move from the lower deck, because you will die. Though you are saved, you have potential to die. If you do not outgrow certain habits, they will suffocate you and you will die in your father's house. Grow, grow and outgrow certain things. The Bible says, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can be holy. We can be perfect as he is perfect. God's grace is enabling. He can, he can give us power to do as he wants us to do. As I'm about to close, I am told now, from that second air deck, the last one, that's where the window was. That's where the window was, which means as they entered the first deck, they were unable to see the outside world. They were unable to see the rain, which required faith. As they entered the second deck, they were still unable to see, which required faith because we walk by faith, not by sight. When we go through these decks, we do not need sight. But when all is said and done, when a sinful sinner has become now a saint, when we have denied all sinful ways, when the, now the fruit is ripe, then we will ascend to the last deck, which is glorification, where we will find the window and we will see his glory. Until then, let's continue to grow. We should be upward moving and forward driven. May God bless you as we commence this day. As we go to prepare for the Sabbath, may we cleanse and ask God to work in us. Masalane, I am confident in this. The one who started the good work within you 
will carry it to completion. God will not leave us half done. He will not leave us halfway. He will carry us to completion until that day when he presents us blameless and spotless before his throne. Let us allow God to continue working in us. Let us continue growing. Justification process is not enough. Let's go and be sanctified and be put aside and be consecrated and be made holy as he is holy. May God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Can you please pray for us, my sister? Heavenly Father who dwells in high places in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for the plan of salvation, which was not an afterthought, but rather a, a revelation of what has been laid before the foundations of the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you that when we sinned, you were not thumb-sucking, you were not moving to and fro, trying to find a solution. But when we sinned, you went to the plan that pre-existed before we even existed. And through that plan, it led Christ to die on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that we are justified. We thank you that when we accept you as our personal savior, that you cover us with your righteousness, that we, we are made to appear. We are proclaimed righteous. We are proclaimed saints and holy. Though we are sinners, we thank you that when you look at us during justification, you see the character of Christ in us. You see the holiness of Christ that is covering us. And we also thank you that you afford also as an opportunity now to get to a point where we mimic and ultimately become just like Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by beholding, we become changed. Heavenly Father, help us to always gaze and fix our eyes to the cross where our salvation is. So Lord, when we fix our eyes in you, we are made, we become just like you. Heavenly Father, we are about to start this day. We know there are many challenges out there that are awaiting us. We receive them all, Father, with you next to us. For we know that all things Things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your will. Lord Jesus, all we ask, we do not want a life without problems, but we want a life with your presence so that in your presence, we might be able to face everything. In your presence, we might be able to be made whole. Bless each and every one of us as we commence and prepare for the Sabbath so that, Lord, we are plunged in your blood and we are made holy to enter the holy hours. It is in Jesus' name that I pray, even for the forgiveness of our sins, believing that all that you have promised to give us in Jesus' matchless name. Amen.